Welcome to Angus. In this video, we will create a new invoicing period via the Period Setup page. In the term we create, we will suppress a given lesson day, assuming that it is a public holiday. We will demonstrate how to carry over outstanding balances and overpayments from the student's previous invoice to their current term's invoice. We will then view the current invoices for a few students to check that their outstanding balances have been carried over correctly before bulk emailing the new term's invoices to our students. We begin the video on the summaries page with a summary statement. This is where Angus displays the current balances for all of our students for the current term. If we view the table, we can see that most of our students currently display a nil balance on their account, with the exception of three students. The two students, Abby Hughes and David Hutchings, show a final amount to pay of $20 on their account, and the student, Jesse Walton, has made an overpayment of $20. Now to ensure that these outstanding balances and overpayments are carried over correctly to the new invoicing period, we need to enter the Preferences page by clicking on the Preferences icon in the top banner and we also need to enter the General tab. Now it's important that we tick the checkbox to Yes to ensure that these outstanding balances and overpayments are carried over correctly to the student's new terms invoice. By clicking the checkbox, a reminder note will appear on the screen confirming that any preference changes we make will not take effect until the new period has been created. To remove the message, I click OK. I'm going to save my selection and confirm my changes. I can now enter the Period Setup page to create my new invoicing period. To do so, I click on the Period Setup icon in the top banner and I proceed to enter the details that my new period will start and end via the calendar buttons. My new invoicing period is going to begin on the 4th of April and if I click select we will see this date appear in the period starts window and the period is going to end on the 26th of June. I click select and once again the date will appear in the appropriate window. Now we're going to exclude the date of the 16th of June, assuming that it is a public holiday so we can withhold it from appearing on our students' invoices. To do so, I click on the plus button associated with the excluding table and I select the appropriate date from the pop-up calendar. I click select and we'll see the date appear within the excluding table. I can now click on the create a new period button and Angus will confirm the start and end dates for my new invoicing period along with the total number of weeks. I click yes to confirm that this is correct and Angus will automatically generate my new terms invoices for all of my students based on the dates entered in the period setup. A message will appear on the screen confirming that the new period has been created. I click OK and I can now enter the students page to view the invoices of those three students that showed either an outstanding balance or an overpayment from their previous invoice. The first invoice we're going to view belongs to Abby Hughes, so we click on her name in the student list, followed by the magnifying glass to display her new terms invoice. And if we view the other items section of Abby's invoice, we can see the mention of the outstanding amount which has been added to the account of $20 and we can see that her total amount due has been adjusted accordingly. We can close the pop-up window and we're going to view the invoice for the student David Hutchings by clicking on his name in the student list followed by the magnifying glass to display the invoice. And once again in the other items section we can see the mention of the outstanding balance of $20 from the previous invoice which has been added to the total amount due for the period. We can close the pop-up window and we're now going to view the final invoice which is for Jesse Walton. We click on his name in the student list and we then click on the magnifying glass once again to display the invoice. And we can see in the other items section we now have a mention of the credit which has been carried over from the previous period of $20 and this has been deducted from his total amount due on his current invoice. 
we can close the pop-up window and return once again to the student's page. Now before we proceed to bulk email the new terms invoices to our students, we need to send ourselves a test email. To do so, we click on the preferences icon in the top banner once again and we enter the email tab. Now it's important that we correctly enter and save all our ISP details and send ourselves a test email. Once the test email has successfully been sent, Angus will save the ISP details and use them for all future emailing. It's important to know that you cannot email invoices from Angus without having sent a successful test email first. We check our details are correct and to send the test email we simply click the test button at the bottom of the screen. Once we have successfully received the test invoice to our inbox we can then proceed to enter the bulk email page via the bulk email icon on the top banner. Now for the purpose of the video we will be sending only two invoices to the top two students listed in the table and you can see that the rest of the students have been selected to the status of no so that they will not receive the email. To change your student status between yes and no we simply right click on the cell associated with the student and simply click send or don't send. Now before you proceed to send the invoices to your students we suggest that you send the invoices to your own email address first for checking. To do this, we click the checkbox that says send all invoices to me and we then click the send all button and we can then view those invoices in our own inbox. Once we are happy that the details are correct, we unclick this checkbox and we then click the checkbox that says CC invoices to me. This will now send all the emailed invoices to your students along with a copy to your own inbox. We click the send all button and Angus will show up a pop-up message saying that we're about to send the invoices by email. Do we wish to continue? We click yes and there will be confirmation of the total number of emails that will be sent. In this case there will be two emails. We click yes again and we can see the progress bar appear on the screen and we can see that the first emailed invoice is being sent to Claire Cooney and the second emailed invoice is now being sent to Joanne Briggs Once the invoices have successfully been sent a confirmation message will appear on the screen and we can click OK and if we view the table once again we can see in the status column confirmation that these invoices were sent and the date is listed along with the time that the invoice has been received. If we now return to the students page and look at Joanne in the student list we can also see in our invoices table confirmation that invoice number 629 has been sent to the student and details of that sent email is listed in the table also. And that completes the video.